Hey, what's up guys? Ryan Groth here, and I wanna talk about one of my favorite topics and one of the most underserved areas of the business owner's life, which is how to balance family life as a business owner. I am a man who's some 34 years old at the time of this recording, I'm married 10 years, I have four kids, I have a very profitable, thriving business, and the, there's a reason for that. Uh, it's because I've made a very important decision to balance my family. However, it's not always been that way. Uh, I'm not in my 50s, I'm not a sage, I'm not a gray-haired man who can tell you all this wisdom in the world, but I will tell you I've sought those people out and I've extracted their wisdom and I'm living a, a, a life that is not necessarily easy, but it's definitely fruitful in the terms of uh, having a family and a business and balancing those well. Uh, some of the worst piece of advice ever was that you can never live a balanced life and that uh, your family will always suffer if you're an entrepreneur or you're a business owner. And, and I just said, there's just no way I can accept that. There's no way I could see myself being a number, a statistic, the wrong side of the statistic of seeing divorce. Uh, why? Because I was there. It happened with me. My parents, uh, my mom had remarried, so she was married for the second time. They had a contracting business, and I saw plans all over the kitchen table, and I saw uh, just all kinds of tools in the corner, and I saw like us scrambling to have a nice barbecue dinner that night, and then we'd make a big push for one big vacation, and it was basically uh, not a great time of connection because we were recovering. We were on E. We were over on E with gas, and we were redlining with our engine. I mean, it was just difficult because everybody was working so hard and I know that that's common. I know you're watching this, you're like, how do I, even as a salesperson, even as an employee, how do you balance family and business? And I think the first thing you got to just commit to, if I'm going to give you some of my best practices after telling you it's possible, you can do it. Uh, one is to realize that if your spouse is not, you're not connected with your spouse and they're not happy with you, everybody can see that. Okay. So even if you're a really selfish business person, which many of you are, and I was, I was and am, have been one before, if your spouse is unhappy, everybody can see that. What does that mean? Well, are they talking to your spouse? Yes or no? What they're seeing is they're, they're, they're noticing that you're not really making them a priority and they're paying attention and taking notes. Many of them are taking notes saying, I don't know if I want to be like that person. And so when you have doubt in your team members and your employees' lives, about your family life and you're sharing with your life an example that's not what they're stoked on, then they start to lose a little bit of desire to be fully connected to you. So therefore, when you try to ask them to do more things, they may not be as bought in because they think that you care more about business than they do about family. And then they are feeling what they're taking away from my family and ends up becoming this ripple effect or this, this vicious cycle rather of you don't take care of your family, so then you expect others because you're the leader and they're like you, and then they have to, it's like I've seen it time and time again, like CEOs and founders who are just really good at getting out of a pit and making big things happen, they end up destroying everybody along the way, and then they have to, they do it all over again. You see like two or three marriages go down by the time they're in their 50s and they've got a couple sets of kids. And it's, it's, it's I mean, again, it's just not the thing I want to do. Okay, I don't want to. I don't want to subscribe to that success board. You know, that's not what I'm. I don't think those guys and girls are thinking this is this is what I want to do. I, I just don't think that's what they signed up for purposefully. But over time, they look back and they're like, what happened? The reality is, is that you are making your business more important than your family. And I think that you guys got to make business less important than your family. And as a result, people are going to say, wow. This owner, this leader actually cares about me subconsciously because they're caring about their family. What does that mean? That means that your priorities are there. If they ever have an issue with their family, they know that they're safe to express that and they're gonna get covered by you and you're still gonna keep them employed. You're still gonna believe in them and support them. So when you make family first, everybody's paying attention to you, right? Everyone's watching, they're saying, wow, that, that spouse is stoked on this person. That's a good thing. Those kids are healthy. That's a good thing. And so you're doing a lot of long-term building and creating a lot of long-term upside. Your customers see that too. If you make family a priority, nobody can ever say you are, you're bad because you love your family. I mean, that's, if there's anything on the earth that you can't point a finger at, it's the fact that somebody who loves their family and does a good job loving and protecting and providing for their family. Like that is, the best thing you can do. So if you focus on that 
and actually trust that your business is going to be successful because you're doing that and making those deposits, people are taking a lot of notes. I'm telling you, they're watching you and taking notes. And I know that people, I've watched people and I've taken notes and I said, I don't want to do that. I don't want to work so hard coming on Sundays three or four times a week to catch up. I don't want to tell my wife I'm going to be home and then I'm not home until 30 minutes later and dinner's cold. Like I don't want to live in that place, that prison I'm creating for myself because I have a frustrated spouse and then kids that feel neglected and then they don't want to grow up and be like this because I mean there's a massive long-term effect that's not good when you don't make family a priority. So trust that family, when you love your family well, everybody's watching, they're all taking notes and they say, oh, I feel safer with you. I feel safer with this person. And that when you ask them to do something, you know it's in their best interest and not just for you, okay? So how do I actually practically do that? So you trust, uh, you, you make proactive plans. Just like you build your business, you, sh you guys should have some kind of a family identity that you guys surround yourself with. You should have some goals. You should have some quarterly objectives. You should have date nights. You should invest in the, in the babysitter so you and your wife are connected because your spouse and you are gonna be, they're gonna be there listening to you. If you're, even if you're working together, it's even a whole nother thing. Like you guys need to have time for yourselves or you're not talking about business, okay? So then when you start to, you say, okay, I have my family, I have my business. If you're less than a million, less than two or three million, you're wearing a lot of hats. As you get bigger, you're wearing less hats and you're specializing. The first thing you need to do is say, how do I learn to become the best salesperson I possibly can? If I become the best salesperson on the planet, in my space, as the owner, I'm able to delegate everything else and get that done through automation or delegation or elimination. You get those done and you're selling, then you say, okay, I could delegate more, I could delegate more. And then you have people following you who are like, hey, I'm stoked on this guy or girl because they love their family, they're bringing it in, they're consistent, and they're making the main thing the main thing, which is sales, and there's enough money to continue to employ them. Okay, so now that you have that solved, then you say, okay, how do I leverage a little bit more, have my closing ratio get up, beautiful, get some marketing, get some more systems and sales training and processes, and then you could say, what do I want to do with my time now? Well, I don't want to sell anymore. I need to delegate sales. How do you do that? Well, you bring in awesome people and awesome people typically are people with great values and great character. And those people are not going to work for somebody who doesn't love their family very well. They're just going to see it from like 10 miles away. And they're like, this doesn't look like a character I want to follow. So you have to follow, you have to be somebody you want to follow, attract those, those types of people come in. They're going to look at you and say, I'm a salesperson, can I have a healthy family life and crush it in business in this market with this owner? Yes or no? Well, let's look at his life because you're modeling what they're going to have a miniature version or an, a version of, right? So that's the next step. So make family priority. Everyone's watching. Everyone's taking notes. Focus on selling. Delegate the rest. Eliminate and automate the rest. Now you have a lot of cash in the bank. You have a lot of time, but then you don't want to keep the machine or stop the machine from going. So build and delegate sales by onboarding attractive, high-performing, talented people who are gonna come in and sell with a formal structured way. Now you're an owner who has sales cooking and then you have money for marketing, so you have more marketing cooking and then you have operations delivering what you've, what you've sold people and fulfilling that and then you're seeing your balance sheet improve and now you're running actual an actual business and you can do it remotely. You can go to Hawaii, which is where we live. I mean, I run a business from Hawaii. I don't have to physically be there. It's the way our nature of our business is. But you can be uh, on vacation with your family. You can have your le level, uh, your structured leadership meetings, your structured sales meetings, and have people that you can trust to do that. And they're going to trust you and you can trust them if you're somebody that's trustworthy. Does that make sense? And so make a family first, trust the process, trust God, he's got you, he's gonna take care of you if you make family a priority and he'll bless that and you'll be blessed by doing that. Um, so that's really it. There's a whole lot more that, that I could talk about with that. But I just think that guys and girls, you know, um, don't leave your family as like, uh, don't neglect them. I mean, why are you even doing this in the first place, right? Dig deep and ask why. If you're doing it for yourself, uh, then why have a family? <laughs> like, right? Why have a family? But if you want a family, you want to provide well and be successful, you have to focus on family and then build people who want that too because they're all going to work together. You guys are going to crush it together and it'll be great. So anyway, I uh, hope you like this video blog. 
you know, we love talking with owners and, uh, and folks who have a big vision, who want to grow, and we have a great program to help you assemble a high-performing sales team like I just kind of illustrated and talked about. Please uh, reach out to us, click the link, book a call, fill out the questionnaire, and uh, we'll talk about you and see how we can help. Thank you so much and talk to you later.